Well, can I just offer my welcome as well? Uh, I see the children have grown taller, but the adults have grown wider. <laughs> well, certainly I have. I'm one of those who put on a couple of pounds during lockdown, and I just can't get rid of it. Never mind. Well, there'll be some of the song that we're very familiar with with Messy Church, and maybe one or two that you're not so. Um, can I just say to the children, um, if you can't see the, the screen for the words, just stand up where you are. I'm sure that'll be fine. Um, or try and, you know, see it where you can. I realise it's not that great. Um, we're just experimenting with a couple of speakers this morning to see if we can make it a bit more balanced, because we've got people at the back rather than everybody jammed at the front. If it's too loud, just tell me and we'll see where we go. But of course, the first song that we always sing at Messy Church is... I know Jesus loves me. You all know this one off by heart. So I know you're all seated, but I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you can remember the actions, that's great. If you can't, make them up. That's what I do. Jesus loves me. I know Jesus loves me. I know Jesus loves me. I think you had the actions better than I had them. I get confused. Never mind. That's what I should have mentioned, there's instruments on the table and there's some uh, scarves of worship that you can use. So, and you've got your hands as well and your feet that you can stomp. Okay, we're going to pray. So let's just close our eyes, put our hands together. Let's remember that God listens to our prayers. And just repeat the words that I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you you are with us today at Messy Church as we offer you our praise. Bless each one of us this morning. As we enjoy our time together. As we enjoy our time together. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay. So this morning if you've been reading ahead of your schedule you will know that we're going to be thinking about the story of the feeding of 5,000 people I like to call it the feeding of 5,000 hungry people 
because if you go all day without eating, you will be hungry, won't you? And um, just out of interest, who's hungry this morning? Do you not have breakfast before you came? Or you had breakfast and you're still and you're still hungry? Okay, I'm hungry. I well, I got up at half past six this morning. I know some of you were up earlier, but at half past six in the morning, I don't feel like eating food. Anybody eat like to eat food that early in the morning? Oh dear. Oh, I can't. I'm missing breakfast this morning because I always have a nibble in between church uh, this morning. Um, but I wonder, what is the greatest number of people that mums and dads have ever fed? If you had a dinner party or something like that, what is the, the greatest number that you've ever fed? Anybody fed any more than 10 Okay, 15? No. Okay. Oh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, the same as so. Any, anybody 30? Anybody more than 40? 50? <laughs> so come on then, Anna, shout out how many people have you fed at one time? You hear that? A hundred for Christmas Day lunch. And we helped and we did it two years in a row. So it was hard work feeding a hundred people. Imagine feeding 5,000. That was quite amazing. And in the story, we'll hear that people were so excited to listen to Jesus and learn a bit more about what he was saying about God that they forgot to eat. And that they were just so listening that they didn't take any lunch with them and forgot about eating. So has anybody enjoyed, have been somewhere where they've enjoyed themselves so much they had forgotten to eat? And mummy and daddy or grandparents have said, you need to eat your dinner, have you had anything to eat? No? Maybe just me then when I was young, too excited playing football and didn't really want to eat, but that's what happened with all the people this morning. And um, we're going to hear about a little boy who had a picnic. I'm not going to tell you what he brought for his picnic, but does anybody have a favourite food if you were taking a picnic? Ian, slide down. Pizza. Pizza? Yeah. You can't have pizza for picnic. I love pizza. Do you, uh, does anybody else have a pizza for picnic? Okay, so any other favourite foods for, because you normally have little sandwiches, don't you? And, um, and so? Sausage. Sausage. Oh yes, you always have a little cold sausage, don't you? And uh, some water? Well, we need to drink and eat. So we're going to hear about the little boy who shared his picnic with everybody. So. Um, I'm going to watch the video. If you can't see it, try and stand up so that you can. And it's Jesus Feeds the 5,000. Stories of the Bible. Jesus Feeds the 5,000. This is Jesus. hey Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Oh, hey, everyone. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. A crowd started to gather around Jesus. There were 5,000 men and many more women and children. Turning to Philip, he asked, Hey, Philip! Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? You see, Jesus was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Um. Philip replied, Even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. I got an idea. Then Andrew spoke up, There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Jesus said, Tell everyone to sit down. Right, 
everyone. Sit down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and gave them to the people. There you go. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. Want some more? I'm all good, thanks. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. You guy. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves and two fish. Isn't that an amazing story? So we're going to have a memory verse now, a bit earlier than we normally would. But um, we've got a verse from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I thought we'd just have a picture of the incredible Hulk there. <laughs> so I wonder where he gets his amazing strength. Maybe it's from God. So can you all see that? So let's, uh, you know what to do, we read it together, I take some words out and see if you can remember what it is. So we say together, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Okay, I've taken some words out. I can do through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Okay. I can do Oh, this is too easy this morning, isn't it? I think. Let's try again. I. Okay, very well done. And I think this is the last one. I. Well, I think you all got there. It was like a Zoom meeting with everybody coming in at different times. And uh, never mind. But Philippians is a book in the New Testament. It was a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Philippi. And uh, we call it Philippians. And I think let's just... Oh, I thought we had it on again, but we don't. But our, we can do all things because Jesus is our friend. And when we use the word Christ, that we did in that verse, it's another v word for saviour. So sometimes you might hear the term Jesus Christ in the Bible. That means Jesus is our saviour. So we have another song. I know you know this one off by heart, don't you? And um, so you can stand up, do the actions and enjoy. Our God is a... Praise God. God.
Hi everyone and welcome to our September Messy Church craft slot. And this month we've got a craft bag which contains all the materials that you need to make our Feeding the 5000 crafts. If you haven't got a bag yet, then you can still order one by emailing us messychurch at billerickychurches.org. Just let us know the address you want it delivered to and the number and age of the children that you want the bag made up for. So I'm going to talk you through what's in the bag uh, for this month and do um, a demonstration of one of the crafts as well. So the first craft in our bag is a scratch card and the idea is to do some sort of visual representation of the Feeding the 5000 story. We've also included a toothpick for scratching on the card um, but you can also use your, um, your fingernails, a paper clip and a coin is really good for making thicker uh, scratches on the card. So the second craft I want to talk about is our pipe cleaner fish and everything that you need to make this craft is in the sealed envelope. It's really easy to make, all you need to do is thread the beads onto the pipe cleaner and then twist the ends into a fish shape. Now this has really small parts so we, we say please don't do this with any children that are under three years. The third craft that we've got is our expandable fish or loaves paper chain. And here's where the craft demonstration comes in. So we've given you a sheet of A4 paper. You can use your own in a different colour if you like. And the first thing you need to do is to fold your sheet of paper into a concertina. And I find the easiest way of doing this is to fold it in half, then fold it in half again, and then once you've opened it out and you've got the folds in it, you can fold over the last strip so that you get alternate folds in the piece of paper. And then with your folded strip, you can draw your fish or loaf or fish and loaves. But the really important thing to remember is to make sure that your design touches on both sides where the folds are. So I'm going to just draw a really quick and basic fish now. And I'm making sure that it touches on the edges. And I'm going to cut it out really quickly. So you'll do this a lot more carefully than I am now. But what you should hopefully end up with is a line of fish or loaves all joined together, which you can then decorate uh, whatever way you want to. And in my example here, I've done fishes and loaves and I've decorated with tin foil and baking paper. So the final craft I want to talk about is our loaves and fishes Play-Doh and we've given you some yellow and blue Play-Doh in a little Ziploc bag and also a Feeding the 5000 Play-Doh mat. And the idea is to make yourself some loaves and fishes to put onto the Play-Doh mat. And then you can use this as a springboard for thinking and praying about those who may not have enough food. And really we felt that this Feeding the 5000 story was a good way of thinking about um, some local projects that have been working tirelessly to provide support for those that may not have enough locally or may be socially isolated. And the two projects are the Billericay Food Bank and Hutton Daily Bread Pop-Up Cafe. And they've been doing an amazing job um, in helping to tackle local food poverty and social isolation, as well as supporting those who may have been having more trouble getting access to supplies and food during lockdown. And we've put a card into the pack that gives some information about these projects, um, including how you can help out and how you can get in touch with the projects if you or someone you know needs support. On the back of the card, we've got a recipe for fish cakes. 
and making them into the shape of a fish was really fun um, but entirely optional. So have a go at the recipe, learn a bit more about these projects, try out and enjoy um, all the crafts in the bag but most of all stay safe and know that you are still very much in our hearts and in our prayers at this time. Love and blessings, the Messy Church team. Jesus feeds thousands. Jesus and his disciples were tired. They needed a quiet place to rest. So they set out in a boat. A crowd of people followed the boat. Over 5,000 people had come to see Jesus. Even though he was tired, he wanted to help them. He got out of the boat and blessed and healed many people. Later that day, his disciples said, These, It's getting late. These people should go home and eat their dinner. Jesus said, We can feed them all. See if anyone has any food. The disciples the disciples found a boy. He had five loaves of bread and two small fish. Jesus said, bring the boy to me. The disciples asked, how will so little food feed all these people? Jesus said, you will see. Then Jesus took the bread and gave thanks to God. His disciples gave bread and fish to everyone. There were 5,000 men plus women and their children. To the disciples' surprise, 12 baskets were left full. Over. Thank you very much, Leah. And uh, what we're going to try to do when we do have messy church, if families can't be here for different reasons, we're going to try and get them to do prayers and readings and uh, stuff on the video so they don't miss out and we can enjoy them being with us. So, Jesus feeds 5,000 hungry people. So we've heard that over 5,000 people, and that's 5,000 men, okay? Because in Jesus' day, when they were counting numbers, they just counted the men. But actually there was 5,000 men and women and children. So there could have been like 10,000 or more people there that Jesus was feeding. But I said earlier that they were too busy listening to Jesus, they forgot about their lunch, then all of a sudden it was time to eat, eat. And then um, the disciples were a bit nervous about everybody being in the middle of nowhere without any food. So they said to Jesus, send them home. We can't feed them. Send them home and they'll look after themselves. Uh, but that isn't what Jesus said. Because the Bible reading said that Jesus knew what he was going to do. He knew he was going to be able to perform what we call a miracle. But the disciples weren't thinking about that. They were just thinking, we need to get these people home. And so Jesus said to the disciples, see if you can find anyone who has any food. And so they started looking for someone. Did they find a pizza? No. no. Did they find any nice little sandwiches? No. With egg and chess, or cress rather, chess? Egg and cress. Did they find any cold sausages? No. But what did they find? They found a little boy who had his picnic. I reckon loaves and fishes were the little boy's favourite food. So out of all those people, only one little boy took his picnic. And we know that he had five loaves and two fishes in a little basket. So the disciples took this to Jesus and said, huh, told you, told we couldn't feed everybody. This is all we can find. And uh, Jesus said, it's okay. Trust in me and trust in God. And so Jesus got the food. He prayed to God. He blessed it. He broke it. And he said, right, go and feed everybody. And guess what? 
everybody was fed. Everybody was fed on what the little boy had to give. Now I think that's quite amazing, don't you? The little boy, he could have said, this picnic is mine. I know everybody's hungry, but I'm not going to share it. I'm going to eat it on my own. Did he do that? No. No, that would have been very selfish, wouldn't it? But the little boy said, okay, I'm willing to do what I can. I'm going to play my part. And that's all that Jesus asks of us to do. He just says, I'm not going to ask you to do more than you can, but whatever you have and whatever you can do, just give it to me. But why did Jesus perform this miracle? Was it to show that God was amazing and can do amazing things? Yes. Was it to show that he could do miracles because he was the son of God? Yes. Yes. But there was another reason. Because the Bible tells us that when Jesus looked on all the crowds of people there, 5,000 men and women and children, he loved them. And it says that he had compassion on them. That meant he was concerned that they were hungry. So yes, he wanted to do it. He knew he could perform a miracle, but he also did that because he loved them. He saw that they were in need. And I often pray that God would give me a heart to love people the way that he loves them and the needs that they have as well. So, you remember the memory verse that we had earlier? That reminds us that little boy lived out this memory verse. If you can remember what it is. I... Let's put all the words on and we say it as loud as we can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Okay. The amazing thing about this story, not only did they feed all those people, there was food left over. And Jesus said, go and collect what's left. And if you were listening earlier, can you remember how many baskets were left over? Twelve. Twelve. And how many disciples were there? Twelve. So there was one basket for each disciple. And I often think, because the disciples doubted what Jesus said he was going to do, I think Jesus was making a point and said, okay, you doubt me, there's a basket, not just one between two, There's 12 baskets for 12 of you, a reminder of all that Jesus can have.
great song. I think I need to learn some actions for that and perhaps next time we... Does anybody know that song anyway? Okay, well, Jesus is a superhero. He is our best friend. And when we are with him, we can do wonderful things. So, we've got some prayers that have been uh, pre-recorded for this morning. And it's um, Anthea, Holly, Karen and Gran. So, I think put our hands together, but I know you want to watch the screen to see what they've been praying for. Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this miracle that Jesus did. Thank you that he provided food for the people and that he loves us and can provide for our needs as well. Please help us trust in you. We know you will always provide and make great things even from small things. Help us to share what we have and use what we have for your glory. Aww. And I guess Daddy was behind the cam with a bit of a wobble there or something. <laughs> but thank you for your, offering your prayers this morning. They were lovely prayers. So we have the Lord's Prayer now, and uh, we need a volunteer who's going to show us how to do the actions. Do you know how to do the actions, do you? I think I do. Well, come on then, let's stand here, right there, so we can all see you. She's just finishing our breakfast there, I think. <laughs> okay, I'll say the word so you don't, uh, uh, so you don't have to um, worry about the words. But if you can say the words and the actions together, that would be great. Okay, so we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well done, Emily. Woo. You can do that every week now then, can't you? Okay, you can sit back down. You've had your five minutes of fear. <laughs> okay, what's up next? Oh! Church Family News. When on your table there is the latest Church Family News. This, is, this can be used for wonderful things. You can either put it on your fridge door to be reminded of what's happening or you can make it into a fan like Anna's done because she's so hot. She made the church family news into a fan. Anybody else do that? Yeah. Just Anna. Okay. <laughs> so please have a read through. Lots of different things happening in the coming weeks. And just to mention that we've had quizzes all the way through lockdown and John and Jackie have been hosting these on Zoom. There's been about 30 people or so each time. They've been great fun. A lot of you here have been involved, but there's always room for more. And can I just say that the Carr family are the reigning champions. So if you want to knock us off our perch, get yourself along to the quiz. If you want the details, I can email you then or see John or Jackie. That's great fun. That's on the 30th of September. And we are planning to have Messy Church here again in October. That's the 18th, which is the third Sunday. And we're going to be looking at the story of the wise and foolish builders. It's another great story that we can learn about um, then. And if you haven't picked up a Messy Church diary, I put some on your tables as well, just in case you've lost the ones that you had before lockdown will all be fine. So, message just nearly coming to the end, and our final song is always this one. May your life in this world be a happy one. May the sun be warm, and may the skies be blue. May each storm that comes your way clear the air for a brighter day. 
the saints and Savior watch over you. May your life in this world be a happy one. May the sun be warm, may the sky be blue. May each storm that comes your way clear the air for a brighter day. May the saints and Savior watch over you. As you make your way through this old world, You see the beauty of the morning dew As you smell the summer flowers As you pass away the hours With the saints and Savior watch over you Such a lovely song. I bet you've missed listening to it over the last few months, I know I have. Okay, we're going to say our final prayer, so let's just put our hands together, perhaps close our eyes, just think about what we've been learning this morning and thinking about talking to God. So just repeat what I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you for the amazing miracle Of Jesus feeding 5,000 hungry people. Help us to do amazing things in your name. Be with us and our families and those we love in these challenging times. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're going to finish with Messy Grace. I think I need a volunteer for this. Can anyone remember the actions for Messy Grace? No, 
nobody can, can they? Oh, Christine, come on, Christine. <laughs> So only because I'm leading it, of course, I need to make sure that everybody says the words. Okay. So if you want to do the action, just do what Christine does. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Okay, so we normally have something called a dismissal at the end of a service. Does anybody want to read that out where they are? Come on, then, sweetheart. Okay, and we say, in the name of Christ, we will. So. Really lovely to see you all this morning. Thank you for coming. Don't forget to take everything with you, um, all your craft and what have you. Don't forget to leave through the middle door. And um, obviously, you can chat outside in the open air. So, we'll see you soon. Take care. And I, as I say at the end of every um, video that we've been doing, uh, be safe and be blessed. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.